The topic of this video is combined slip. Combined slip occurs when mechanical displacement is present in both the lateral and the longitudinal directions. For example, this will occur when you need to brake while cornering. While combined slip is not a very common situation in normal driving, it is still important to study. A connection between the lateral slip and the longitudinal force, and vice versa, can determine the outcome of a critical situation when it's, when it's important to quickly reduce the speed and avoid an obstacle at the same time. This video will recap uh, the modeling assumptions and consequences of this, but now with the case of slip in both directions. Uh, the compliance or bending only takes place in the treads. This implies that both the rim and the tire carcass are assumed to be rigid. The treads is assumed to be divided into weightless bristles. These bristles are infinitely small in the longitudinal direction of the tire and in the lateral direction we assume that the bristles are as wide as the tire itself. A technical assumption is that each bristle can bend independently in the lateral and the longitudinal direction, as well as of each other. This is mainly to simplify the analysis. When the bristle enters the contact patch, we assume that it's undeformed. Hence, we don't need to describe the state of the bristle when they're traveling outside the contact. Another technical assumption is that the bristle deform linearly to the shear stress. This simplifies the analysis substantially compared to more realistic assumptions, for example, of plastic deformation. We are assuming, we are aiming for a model that can describe steady state phenomena of force and torque generation. Hence, we need to assume that the travel time of the one bristle is constant through the contact patch. It also implies that we can lump the shear stress into the total force and torque of the entire contact patch. It is convenient to assume a very simple friction model. Strict Coulomb friction can be used, for example. In this video, we will use a Coulomb friction model with direction-dependent friction coefficient for stiction case and isotropic friction for the sliding case. Based on these assumptions, we can deduce some important phenomena for the future analysis. A first observation is that the deflection of the bristle grows as we go from the leading edge towards the trailing edge of the contact patch. This is a direct consequence of the fact that we assume undeformed bristles at the inlet and the bristles travel at a different speed at the contact with the tire. Uh, carcass and the ground. This holds true for both braking and propelling, with a difference in direction and of uh, deformation. Also, observe that we are only considering the longitudinal uh, direction yet. For the lateral case, the same arguments and observations hold. The bristles are deformed more and more towards the outlet of the contact. We only show the long tunnel case as it's easier to illustrate. A second consequence is based on the friction model assumption and the independence of the bristles. At each point in the contact, the shear stress reaches the friction limit. After this point, the bristles start to slide against the road surface. We can call this point the breakaway point. Before the breakaway point in the contact patch, all bristles are in stiction mode with the road. Hence, we can call this the adhesive part. After the breakaway point, we know that the shear stress is so large that the bristles are sliding. Consequently, we call this the sliding part of the contact. We have now acknowledged that we have two very discrete conditions in the contact patch. Hence, it is convenient to separate them in the analysis. 
we start with the adhesive part of the contact patch. Here, the Bristol stress is expressed by the linear deformation. The first thing to express is the deformation itself. We denote an arbitrary point in the contact patch in contact with the ground with XR and, another, and the other end of the Bristol uh, connected to the carcass with X. We denote the lateral position of the very same Bristol in contact with um, YR. We use a coordinate system uh, with an origin located in the center of the contact. The total length of the contact is 2A. We then express the deformation UX and UY accordingly as the difference between the upper and the lower part of the bristles. The next step is to conclude that the travel time of this bristle from the inlet to its current position is TC. We can express our coordinates of the bristles travel time using the assumption of constant speed as stated. We see that the speed is different for the top and the bottom of the bristle. The top is traveling with the rotation of the wheel times the effective rolling radius, while the contact uh, is traveling with the, uh, with the wheel hub speed, Vx. We can now use these two expressions to formulate a new expression for the deformation that depends on the position of the Bristol's top position. For convenience, we introduce the concept of slip or theoretical slip, sigma x and sigma y, as the relative speed difference between the upper and the lower Bristol. For one Bristol, we can, using the assumption of linear elastic shear stress, express the stress in the longitudinal and the lateral direction as the deflection previously derived times the stiffness. The stiffness, not necessarily equal in, in the two directions, is expressed by coefficients CPX and CPY times the width of the bristle, denoted dx. To obtain the total force generated in the adhesive part of the tire, we can sum the shear stress for the two directions. We formulate two integrals and integrate from the breakaway point xs to the leading edge uh, of the contact in x equal a. We see that these integrals and consequently the force in the adhesive part are, dependent, are independent of each other, uh, except for the breakaway point. This is shared for both directions. To calculate the force in the adhesive part of the contact, we need to find the breakaway point. If we look at one bristle in the adhesive part of the contact, we know that its force will be dfx and dfy. We have assumed that the bristle obey Coulomb friction. This means that we can express the friction ellipse by dividing these forces with the coefficient of friction mu as x and mu as y, and the load dfz that the Bristol is experiencing. Inside the friction ellipse, we know that we have adhesion, and on the boundary, we must have the breakaway point.